Hello, my name is Lou Walsh from Brainboxes and I'm here to show you how to quick start our remote I.O. or Ethernet I.O. products. So, you buy one of our products, they come in a box just like this. Inside the box there's the following, a quick start guide, a CD and a manual of our other products. And the Brainboxes product itself. So the remote I.O. products come in a yellow case like this. Or, if I take another box, they come in a black case like this. The setup and configuration process for both these products is very similar. However, this is the industrial product for industrial environments with a wide temperature range, and this is the commercial product for commercial environments. So, for the sake of uh, this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to quick start with a commercial product. This particular product is an ED008, it has eight I.O. lines. Each I.O. line has an LED on it. At the top there is an Ethernet jack and a power jack. When you first buy this product and take it out of the box, the first thing I'd recommend doing is connecting the power. Now the power is on a terminal block, there is a minus V, plus V and ground. Conveniently, you can buy an accessory from us which allows you to power these devices from USB, which is very handy when configuring them for the first time on your desk. So for this demonstration, I'm going to plug the USB into the laptop, and I'm going to plug the terminal block into the device. And as you can see, straight away, the power light comes on, all the LEDs for each I.O. line come on, and the status light is flashing green and red. Green and red means there is no network connection. And that's correct, because I haven't yet plugged anything in. So, step two is find a wired network connection. Here we go. And plug it into the device. What happens at this point is two things. First of all, the device waits to see if it is assigned an IP address by your DHCP server. If after one minute it does not get that assignment, then it will revert to its static IP address. Every device has the same static IP, that number is 192.168.127.254. Now, while this device is waiting for its IP address, because this network uses DHCP, you will notice that each of these I.O. lines defaults to green, uh, which means on, which is because the device is set into NPN mode. So when there's nothing connected to them, the, light, uh, the input goes high. Now you can see the status light has gone green and the network light is also green. This is because uh, the local network has assigned this device an IP address and now it's ready to be communicated with over the network. The next step is to find the device on the network. To do that, all I do is I go to my Windows PC, I open Windows Explorer, I click on the network tab and the device will show itself in the network tab automatically using uh, universal plug and play. If later on you, can dis uh, you need to disable this feature, you can. So, here it shows me that there is an ED008 on the network. To, act, uh, to open this device's web page and see the settings, all I need to do now is double click on the ED008 icon. and the device will now open in my default web browser. So, as you can see, uh, this device has an IP address of 192.168.0.72. This is the IP address that has been assigned by the local network. And there are various configuration settings now available to me that I can review and or change. The other clue as to whether this is the correct device if you have multiple Brainboxes devices on your network is the uptime. You can see that this device has been up for exactly two minutes and that's how long it's been plugged in for, so I know this is the correct device. If you're really unsure as to whether this is the correct device that relates to this particular web page, there is a locate device button on the screen. You can click that button and immediately all the lights on the front of the device begin to flash. So I am very confident that this device relates to this web page here. The next thing I wish to do is see if by changing some I.O. lines I can see the change reflected on the web page. So I'm going to 
change this default update interval at the bottom from 10 seconds to 1 second, like so. I'm then going to take a piece of wire and I'm going to connect the ground pin to DIO0. Now you can see that the light on the front of the device has gone off because it's gone to ground and also you can see the digital input has gone low on the screen so that shows this device is functioning absolutely properly and uh, the web page is reflecting the current status of the I.O. lines on the device. The final step I may wish to take here is to see what command I can type into a console which will give me the current state of the I.O. lines of the device. Now very conveniently the web page has a console tab. I can click on that tab and see the console. If I'm not sure about the commands there is a command list, so if I click on that button there, here is the full list of commands available to this device. And I know that by typing in at 01, I'll get a response from the device. At 01. And you can see the device has responded 00FE. The bottom two bytes are the inputs. And you can see that all the inputs are on except for one, the lowest significant bit, which is DIO0, which is off, which is why that is uh, responding in hexadecimal with an E. So I can, I'm now very confident that I've opened the box, I've put the power in, I've connected the device to the network and confirmed it is responding as I would expect. And as you can see, it's very easy to quick start this device. It's taken me all of three minutes to do it and I'm ready now to start integrating it into my system. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Luke Walsh and this has been a demo about quick starting a Brainbox's remote I.O. device. Goodbye.